Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV and also my How to Home Lab series, which is currently my favorite series, and I think you guys are liking it as well. And I have a treat for you guys in today's episode because what I'm going to do is make the case that laptops, yes, laptops, are an awesome way to get started into the world of Home Lab. Now, I know that that might sound a little strange, but just think about it for a moment. Your typical laptop has a battery, which means it can survive the loss of power. It has a built-in KVM because you have a display, you have a touchpad for the mouse, and you have a keyboard. So essentially, you have everything you need in one chassis. Now, what makes this even better is that it's fairly common to have an old laptop lying around. For example, if you've upgraded to a new computer and you didn't sell off your old laptop, then turn it into a hypervisor. Why not? And I'm even going to show you the process of clustering two laptops together, which is going to be great. And if you're wondering why would I want to cluster two laptops together, well, the first rule of Home Lab is that if you can cluster, definitely cluster. So in today's video, not only am I going to show you Proxmox running on a laptop, I'm going to show you Proxmox running on two laptops, and then I'm going to network them together. It's going to be a lot of fun, so let's get started. So, if you want to use a laptop as a hypervisor, what do you need in order to get started? If you already have a laptop lying around, and you prefer not to buy another one, then you could try to use whatever you already have. There's no hard requirement other than the ability to enable virtualization extensions for the laptop that you're using. And outside of that, the more RAM, the better, because the more memory you have, the more VMs you can run. Now, an older laptop may only allow you to run around four virtual machines or so comfortably, but you'd be surprised. It all depends on what apps in particular you are running inside your virtual machines and how memory and CPU hungry they might be. Now, if you don't already have a laptop lying around and you still want to consider using one in order to create a hypervisor, then I'm going to recommend that you stay within business class laptops such as Lenovo ThinkPads and Dell Latitudes. They're built very solid and they last a long time. And they have pretty good performance too. For this video, I decided to use a ThinkPad T440P and a Dell Latitude E6430. Both of these I've reviewed in recent videos as being laptops that still run Linux comfortably even today. And you should be able to find similar models used for around 200 US dollars or so, give or take. For my tests, I've decided to go with Proxmox. It runs fairly lightweight and should allow you to squeeze a lot of virtualization out of your server laptop. The installation process was fairly straightforward. I just filled out the prompts and I let it install. After the installation was done, I accessed the console and I installed all available updates. Since I didn't purchase a license for this video, some of the repositories were locked, but that error can be safely ignored. After refreshing the package database, I had it install all the updates, and then I repeated the process of installing Proxmox as well as the updates on the ThinkPad as well, so that way both devices would be at the same software and patch level, and that's important if you want to cluster. Of course, clustering is optional, but if you have multiple older laptops lying around and they support virtualization, then setting up a cluster can allow your virtualization solution to scale even better. At the end of the day, you are still limited by the speed of your laptop's Ethernet port, which more than likely maxes out at 1 gigabit. But if you're patient when you do transfers between servers, that might not really be a problem for you. The process of setting up a cluster in Proxmox is pretty easy. After you install the software on both computers or however many you have, you access the web console on one of them, you click Data Center, and then you click on Create Cluster. At that point, you name your cluster and then click Create. After the process is finished, you can click on the button that's labeled Join Information and then click the Copy button. Next, you log into the web console of your other server. Again, click on Data Center and then Cluster like you did before. But this time, click on Join Cluster rather than Create Cluster then you paste the information into the box, type in the password of your server, 
and then click join. In my case, it never actually showed the process as being completed. I've run into this problem many times before. I'm not really sure why. It's not that the process never completes, it's just that the status never seems to update beyond a certain point. However, you can confirm the process is complete by going to the other server, and then in the cluster log, it'll show the process as having completed. In order to test out my new cluster, I decided to create a Debian virtual machine and then set it up as a template. And creating a template is a good idea because that means you only need to go through the installation process of the distribution one single time. To do this, you first download an ISO file for the distribution or OS that you want to install, and then you upload that ISO file to the ISO data store on Proxmox. Once that's finished, you can create a VM and go through the prompts. On the first screen, you give the VM a name. And then on the second screen, you could choose the ISO image that you've uploaded earlier. On the third tab, I like to select the QEMU agent checkbox, which is going to help the integration between the virtual machine and the hypervisor. And then for the hard disk, I gave it 16 gigabytes of space and I enabled trim support. After that, I configured the number of CPU cores and the amount of memory that I wanted on the VM. And after the VM was created, I started it. And then I went through the installation process for Debian. Once that was set up, I installed the QEMU guest agent package on the server in order to make sure that that was installed. And again, that's going to improve integration between the VM and the hypervisor. After that was finished, I decided to remove the optical drive since I wouldn't need that anymore. Then I right clicked on the VM and I clicked the option to transform it into a template. And you could create a new VM from the template at any time by right clicking on it and choosing the option to create a new VM, basically the clone option. And I created two Debian virtual machines from that template. After that, I was able to migrate a running virtual machine from the first server over to the second. And I did that to test that clustering was actually working. It took a bit of time to migrate the VM from one server to another, but it did work. And that's great because I can install updates on one of the two servers, move VMs off of it, reboot it, and then move the VMs to the other server, update that hypervisor, I could basically migrate all the VMs off of one server when I want to do maintenance and then move them back when I'm finished, and that's the value of clustering. At least one of the values anyway. And if you have more than one laptop lying around that you have no use for, then why not create a cluster? And this process can work great if you don't have the spare cache for a physical server, but you have some equipment lying around that you're not using. And when it comes to home lab, it's very important to use whatever you have and that will enable you to extend your home lab even further. So there you go. I just showed you the process of setting up Proxmox on a laptop, actually two laptops, and I also showed you the process of creating a cluster and migrating a virtual machine from one to the other. So I hope this video was as fun for you as it was for me. And in the next video, well, I don't know exactly what we're going to do in the next video just yet, but it's going to be awesome. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I recommend that you do so, so you will see that video as soon as I put it out. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day.